for an exhilarating journey into the boundless world of imagination. Welcome, comic book enthusiasts, to the extraordinary realm of Out of Obscurity. This groundbreaking anthology, published by Arrow Comics, unveils a legion of aspiring creators, each eager to leave their mark on the industry. Prepare to be captivated as they breathe new life into obscure public domain characters, creating their own unique tales within the pages of this awe-inspiring collection. Out of Obscurity is a testament to the unwavering passion and creative prowess of these emerging talents. They have meticulously resurrected forgotten heroes and heroines, spinning intricate yarns that span the ages. Brace yourself for action-packed battles, mind-bending mysteries, and heartwarming triumphs that will transport you to uncharted territories of excitement. By supporting our Fun My Comic campaign, you become an essential part of this historic endeavor. Together, we can catapult these aspiring creators towards their dreams of comic book glory. Join us on this epic odyssey and witness the birth of new legends. Your generous contributions will not only help us bring Out of Obscurity to life, but also grant you access to exclusive rewards, including remarkable artwork, signed copies, and behind-the-scene glimpses. Embrace the spirit of adventure, for within these pages, untold wonders await. Together, let us ignite the spark of greatness within these visionary talents and redefine the landscape of the comic book universe. Be a part of history and make Out of Obscurity a reality. Хочу покажу, як кожен спортсмен піднімає вогляд. Покажи. Можемо почати з Тірексу. Ну давай, бачиш стіну, давай. А, блядь, що так чаєш уйдю? It helps to turn on the microphone and unmute. Hello, thanks for being here. If you're catching the replay, I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, I always forget to say this up front, so I'll just say it now. If you enjoy any part of this, uh, please do give it a thumbs up. And if that's dishonest, please don't uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and then uh, if you have any feedback, you're catching a replay, go ahead and tell me what can be improved about the stream. Um, other than like just having someone else do it <laughs> that's that's always an option i guess <laughs> but if uh if yeah if you want to throw a comment in there i'd really appreciate the feedback i'll get a notification that just tells me there's a comment of course if you know how youtube works and then um hopefully i can uh, do things a little better and oh let's see i need to edit that intro i really do need to edit that intro mo said her uh, said hello earlier today so or earlier today like 10 15 minutes ago so there's mo and I know there's a couple other streams going for a while. 80s Made was uh, doing a movie. Let's see. Uh, did he, did he... All right. I don't know why Blue appreciates replay viewers more than his live viewers, but it's his prerogative. It's because I get eight times as many replays as I do live. And that's about it. So um, if that, like, like really if that. But Mo, I appreciate, I appreciate you, Mo, which is why we're not going to look at certain books today. So... Um, yeah 
I'm, I'm just, there's a little book right over here. I'm just I'm just gonna hold it there temporarily. See the shadow on the edge of the screen. So it's waiting, and we're not gonna look at it. Anyway, uh, so oh, okay. So this is the part where everybody wastes time waiting for viewers to show up. So let's see who got the notification, who didn't. Um, I did not tweet this this stream out until like an hour ago. <laughs> that's that's always useful because because uh, I have a job, I have things to do, and still looking for that second weekend job so I can keep on buying comic books. That'd be nice. And, and then um, hopefully I, I got a lead on that, but maybe not. Uh, so what? Usually the vamp is jujitsu and gym. So what's what's going on? Guys, I am just exhausted. This has been such a heavy week. Uh, I had a server die somewhere hours away <laughs> and had to make multiple trips because of, of you know, getting equipment in the right places to, to recover things. And it, it was a disaster. I mean, it was really bad. Uh, somehow a power outage with a surge didn't just make a mess of... Um, of uh hard drives and whatnot because it's an older server it made a mess of a router in the network <laughs> like what the hell <laughs> so anyway and i i can't get into more detail than that but there um there's another entity that overlaps with where this was and they're aware of our it and we're you know we're aware, not really aware of theirs but um, they do they do certain services in the same building and they're flipping out at you know like how could you have a server die and it's like because uh, that happens when the power goes out you know <laughs> and the batteries all die at the same time <laughs> so and the, by the way the batteries are their responsibility uh, and of course the battery backups don't beep that their battery is dead until the power goes out and it, you have like 10 seconds of power in the battery. Like it was terrible. Um, but that doesn't explain why my router in their rack got wiped and like, it was a really bad week. So I've, I've been exhausted. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Okay. So that all finished out by like Wednesday last week. Um, but, but I'm still trying to, to catch up on a whole bunch of things. And, so I'm here. This is my happy place. Well, actually, the, the gym is my happy place, but I'm here. And this week in jujitsu is heavy roll week. And that means I fought for three minutes at a time with... Um... <laughs> oh, there we go. Why why does StreamYard slow down as we, you know in, in a minute for how fast it brings these things up? Big lag. Anyway, enough of your technological holocaust. Yeah, I destroy things. It's my job. Anyway... Um, Everything I learned in jujitsu last week, which was not much because of the classes I missed, we're supposed to be using it in heavy roll week. Heavy roll week is actually called positional sparring. And so you start in a specific position. One person has one goal. The other person has another goal. And you're, we're supposed to use relative to the, the start position and the goals, uh, things from the lessons of the, the last two weeks. And I could not remember basic stuff to start certain moves. So I'm starting with somebody else in a butterfly formation, um, having a guard on me. In other words, they're the down person, their feet are between my knees. That's, and I'm up on my knees like that. That's it. All right. Anyway. And one of the, the things you do as you start trying to get past the guard is stand up part way and like be leaning with your hands on their knees. I forgot to stand up like the entire class forgot to stand up. I think the people I worked with, at least I didn't see anybody. I, you know, there might've been people who remembered just not on me. So, Oh man, it's, <laughs> I, I just felt so trashed at the end. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, I can't single it uh, Wait, I can't single any uh, out any. Ugh, I can't single out any quotes from this. It all sounds gay. Oh, that remind that's the story I wanted to tell. Another boring story from jujitsu. I gotta find this. <laughs> so let's see. Uh you can you guys can find this online. I want to get the, the guys from jujitsu to chip in and maybe get our instructor a rash guard in December when we do rankings again. So we shall see. Let me see. Uh Craig C R A I G Jones Rash Guards. Do, do, do. And we'll get him a nice one. It's like the second one underneath, you know, something like that. Craig Jones rash guards and one athlete. There it is. Uh, no, no, we're not doing that one. Um, that one's obscene. <laughs> this guy makes stuff that 
mocks jujitsu like you wouldn't believe. So share, present, and we'll, we'll get to comics. Don't worry. I'm not. I'm not going to linger too long. But anyway, um, video file, share screen, window. It, it, oh, you don't double click. You hit share, and then you have to add to stream. Okay. So it all sounds gay. Yeah. So he Craig Jones makes rash guards that that or sells rash guards that make fun of jujitsu. Like he's got one here. Uh, view uh, Mexican ground karate is the the name on it because nobody remembers what jujitsu is called. So there's your Mexican ground karate. We should get all right. Sorry. Last Thursday, one of my teammates got a question in early, and this this kind of bothered me, but. Um, he got a question in early and I was really late because of work. So I show up, I showed up about 10 minutes late and, and, or no, no, it was 10 minutes. And my, um, my teammate had asked a question about, uh, I don't even know what, but he's, but the other two, two of the, the three, three people were there. One does social media. She doesn't practice enough. So I like, she's always sitting aside. I don't know why, but then, um, Sometimes she practices, sometimes she doesn't. She had a concussion a while ago. So anyway, uh, but then the other two guys, they're competing next Saturday. Or no, this Saturday. Sorry, in like four days. But they're competing. And uh, let's see. She, uh, so they were asking questions. And so class never actually started because there were just three of them there. And so she starts working on her phone because they're answering questions. And I come in. I apologize for being late. I apologized for being late after I came in. And, um, th this gets around to what you said, Mo, don't, don't worry. Believe me anyway. So, so the coach is always like, I don't care. Well, here's the thing is he's been slipping on starting class on time. And that was always something he was very key about starting class on time. And then I get there and then more people show up after me and I don't detail that much, but coach finally gives us something to do relative to the, the this week's or the last week's curriculum. Cause it was last week. And, uh, I turn to the near, the guy nearest me who's competing and now somebody else has filled in over there for the other guys. There's like six of us now. And did he, did he... <laughs> and, uh, and like he's doing his yoga stretches, like he's still warming up or something and nobody obeys the coach when it's time to go. And I'm finally just like, dude, shit or get off the pot. Let's go. And they're like, what? Oh, okay. And I'm the only one practicing. So I let, it was a wasted class. It was terrible. Uh, then I go, I went, so I went back in the evening because I, I needed the lesson. I start working with the dude. Uh, and there, again, I walk in, but I'm two minutes late because I had trouble booking my, my class online and whatnot, my phone outside. And then, uh, I get in there. there. There are three people, but they've started on time. I'm only two minutes late. Awesome. And you know, that's the way I like it. Start on time. And if I'm late, I miss out my problem. So, so excuse me. I can hear my voice is already tired. I'm trying not to be nervous. So, uh, I am so shocked. <laughs> I am so shocked to hear that a woman feels like a third wheel when you guys start going to town. I didn't say she felt like that. <laughs> I am saying she might. <laughs> so anyway, um, the guy I'm working with, it turns out, uh, I forget how it popped up, but he, uh, it comes, it comes out that he's, uh, from, he was in the Navy and he trades slang with the coach. And so you can tell like, Oh, you're Navy you're something. And he says to the coach, you must be some other slang. And, and however the conversation went, and I'm sorry, it was slang for slang. And then the coach says, yeah, you're Navy. You know, you got gay. You guys are gay Navy. Right. And the guy from the Navy says, wait, you were a Marine. Right. And coach says, yeah. And he says, oh yeah, we weren't that gay. So it, it just went on from there. And from that moment on, I started pointing out every time the coach phrased anything where it was gay, like, you know, you got to lift the guy's leg and get in there deep or anything. I'm like, dude, coach, whoa, hang on. And yeah, it, it was bad. So with that in mind, as a token of our appreciation next December at the beginning, I really want to get him this rash guard <laughs> for you, Mo. I'm doing it for you. <laughs> so, uh, what do we get? He was in the Navy. This stuff writes itself. Oh, totally. Yeah. Anyway, I'd actually, I'd prefer a rash guard that says make jujitsu straight again. Um, I can't believe, <laughs> oh, I am. I, I've said your name before and, and, and people and somebody looked at me like, uh, -huh, uh, who's that? You know? So, all right. Boring stories aside, that tells me who's showing up tonight, which is Mo. Thank you. And I appreciate the live audience as well, even if you're silent. So 
uh, where am I? Stop sharing. Cool. All right. So just so there's clarity about what this show is, this is a manger. We will not be looking at this manger. We do independent comics, not manger. There you go. I don't want to arouse your anger. <laughs> You're welcome, Mo. Anyway, thanks for being here. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? We got clumsiness. I do not know who the, uh, whom this is from because I did not recognize the name on the the, uh, the slip. I could keep talking about my experience in judo and jujitsu. Um, I actually stood up for myself really well today. I mean, I could keep talking for days, but I won't. Uh, stood up for myself really well. There is a lady who is now a black belt in judo. And huge anecdote on the day we met. Not really impressed with her as a human. Uh, do, 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 do. Pokemon was a was a contraction of Pocket Monsters. Manger is a con contraction of Mo's anger. <laughs> yep, there we go. Anyway, uh, what it, for whatever reasons, I do not work with her. That is in class. Like I'm, she's some kind of social worker. I don't mean I'm not employed with her. I mean, I don't let her. Uh, I don't let her touch me. She. During my judo training, uh, she when she was still a brown belt, she tried to do a particular throw on me, which puts a lot of weight into your opponent's shoulder. So you're going to go to your opponent this way. And so like your uh, that'd be left shoulder goes to their left shoulder, etc. And instead of hitting me in the uh, top of the shoulder where it's still like part of your chest and where the, the head of the humerus is, she... Um, hey, Felix, how you doing? She threw her body weight into sort of where your deltoid ends and overlaps with your bicep. And I felt my left humerus come out of my shoulder and elongate because she's holding my arm by the, the forearm or the sleeve. You're supposed to use the sleeve mostly in a gi and threw herself into there clumsily. She did not know what she was doing. And uh, <laughs> I thought the story was going to go in a different direction. Oh, she, she is nasty um, in terms of... Uh, she, how do I say this? You're not five years old, but she'll talk to you like you are. And um, yeah, I, I could tell stories about how horrible she is. Anyway, so that was one. And then in the same day, she was trying another, th uh, another throw where you get your opponent's weight on one foot, but then you throw them straight backwards. She put my weight on one foot. So now I'm flat footed and then it twisted me to throw me over. In other words, that takes somebody's knee out. I ain't letting that, that chick touch me. So today, <laughs> I didn't let her touch me, <laughs> and she was kind of shocked. So, oh, Elixir. Okay. That looks like number two. So that's number one. Yeah, all right. I discovered this one after the campaign and decided to give it a chance, and the, uh, the guy who sells this was kind enough to uh, find a way for me to buy it. Whoops. Oh, I don't need to remove that. So she's deliberately trying to hurt you. Uh, yeah, I think she's one of these ladies who thinks, who believes she's going to appeal to guys by uh, showing how tough she is and um, domineering. That domineering will somehow make her appeal to, to men or something. I don't know. She's weird. <clears throat> I ain't going to let that chick touch me. <laughs> I ain't letting that chick touch me like a good rash guard slogan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, ha, ha, I can hurt a man. Would not, would not surprise me. Okay. When we've I, just, these are, these are anecdotes about just how bad she is. When, when we first met, I was, what am, what do I weigh now? Yeah. I was 18 pounds heavier, not entirely fat, but plenty of it. And let's see. She wants to hurt Blue so she can nurse him back to health. Oh, God. Some ladies are so freaking crazy. Here's the cover to Elixir, by the way. And uh, the warm-up for Judo at the time, because a lot of people do this wrestling, all sorts of classes, you warm up by running around the class. Then while you're running, you stop to do, like, walking lunges. and, you, you, and you, Mar What we used to call Mario jumps, which are high, you know, one, one knee high like that forward. And, 
um, just, you just keep jogging around. So anyway, uh, cause I was fat. My, uh, my pants wouldn't stay on the gi pants and I, it was just hot as anything in that room. And so I finally asked the black belt, Hey, you know, can, is it cool? And I had known the black belt before I joined the judo class through mutual friends at my work and yeah, feminasty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and I had asked him, you know, can I just put my gi on after the warm up? Cause I'm wearing, you know, gym shorts and a gym shirt. And he says, yeah, you know, I don't care. He'd, he'd rather we get, and the people would come late to join the warm or to avoid the warm up and then join the class. And he's like, no, I'd rather you do the warm up and everything's about safety than uh, this one. I don't know. Who's our man? Armin. Who's Armin? Anyway, uh, he'd rather everybody be safe and do the warm ups than be properly dressed at the beginning. He just says, make sure you, you get your gi on in time. You know, don't, don't waste time afterwards. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. Here we go. And uh, I'll read these credits. And uh, so then she comes along and oh boy, this class was in eight week segments and every eight weeks was new, were new students because it was out of necessity being run through the university instead of out on its own. Oh, he, he wrote the, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Arm, Armin uh, Nassim, right? I, re I saw that on the, the return address a few minutes ago. Okay. Created by Armin Nassim and Pak Kwan. Are, are written in, he did the lettering too. Art by Pak Kwan. Colors by Rain. Uh, Burrito. Sorry, the dyslexia is kicking. Uh, edits by Brittany Lee. Main cover. I don't know if this is the main cover. Uh, by Cheng Chin Lim. Variant cover by Elmar Santos. Who did this one? Can't tell. Uh, metal cover and best comics exclusive by Alfie McFly. Fem Patel color covers or color co colors. Do, 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 don't know who this did, who did this one. He wrote the book you're looking at. Yeah, I know I'm stupid. Anyway, um, so every eight weeks is new students, etc., and you line up by rank at the beginning of class to bow and all that. I'm in my line. I'm with the other yellow belts uh, towards the orange. And by the way, I'm an orange belt. And and uh, she comes in, and the you know, the front rows, high belts, low, and then down the rows like that. She comes in. She's in the front. Never met her before, and uh, she walks to me in the front row among all the other higher belted people, and talks to me like I'm five, and says, "Now you know, for this class, you have to have a gi." in order to participate. Okay. That's her whole personality right there. Anyway. So yeah. Um, and then she tried to injure me later and uh, I'm done. <laughs> so, it's like, so anyway, I stood up for myself today and because now she's in judo and I are jujitsu where I outrank her. <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know, we, as we rotate around partners, it was our turn together. And I just said, no, no, I'm not doing it. I mean, there's so many more anecdotes. I'm not, uh, this is, you know, I'm not going to tell, but cause probably most of you are asleep anyway, do, 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 lots of panels. I know we got a lot of panels. It doesn't look like it's real wordy. So it looks like lots of panels. Isn't going to totally slow down the reading, but we're getting some movement up front. Okay. Larger panels, somebody who knows anatomy, sure. I like purple. Oh, that seems shiny. Which light is that? That's uh, this one. There we go. That's a little bit better. That lamp won't stay. <laughs> All right. That might be better. I hope it is. Elixir, the last day. Yes, thank you for that. Good day. Geese Louise Lee. <laughs> this ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> um, a minute after she... I didn't go off on her or anything, but a minute after she said that, I... Uh, pop my gi on and I put my belt on in front of her. So I like the colors. I mean, the color palette, I should say I do like, it's not all orange and cyan in one panel, like that whole manipulate emotions thing. So that's, that's really cool. I hope I enjoy the book. Uh oh, 
That looks vicious. Is he like mutating or something? Cool. All right, take a quick glance at number two. Also very shiny. This baby will be touched by, by death forevermore. I'll know what that means when I read the book. So good artist, Mr. Pack, or sorry, Pack Quan. All right, wait, if I want to put it here, I need to move my camera there. That's a little better. All right, so we got the give and take thing going with big splashy pages versus little panels. Jump ahead a little. Five minutes later, I put my gi and belt on in front of her. I knew this chick would be trouble. No more nude sparring. <laughs> I had gym shorts on. In fact, I think I had the shorts I'm wearing now because I used to. Yeah, because these are like no pocket gym shorts. So they're perfect for under a gi, you know, kind of thin, but I have black pair and a gray pair. Wait a minute. Is that an otter? That's utterly ridiculous. I'll show myself out. <laughs> cool. Okay. Same back cover. Let's put these two next to each other. Yeah. All right. And I know my my these aren't tales of woe. It's just crap happens, and some people just aren't good to be with. Um, actually, the thing I really noticed was another lady who I got along with pretty well shifted her personality whenever this pushy lady was around. That To me, that was a big red flag. Like, nope. <laughs> just not going to bother. And, of course, I wouldn't date either of them because of religious differences, but so it goes. Anyway, that was Elixir. I, I like the artwork upside down. I'll see if I like it even better right side up. So this is, to me, when I saw this on the campaign, it looked a little busy, but full size in person, no, it's, it's pretty cool. It's just all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, and nine if you count the eye. All right. Next up. Oh, yeah. All right. This is the monthly, uh, the monthly order. I don't know what's in here, so this could be a dud in terms of indie comics, but there's probably a Batman in here. <laughs> Batman Adventures. Okay, good enough. Stay away from those pushy ladies, Blue. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with a plushy goth lady, you know, slightly plushy. But actually, you know what? When I was 20 <laughs> and 21, I dated a plushy goth lady. <laughs> and we should have gotten together and gotten married, but we didn't. And sometimes I can't help but wonder if uh, the way our lives ended up not meshing had anything to do with why she's now on like five meds, you know, would things have been, have developed differently for her if, if we had been together, you know, can't help but think that. Okay. Pardon me a moment. Well, for everybody who was late, uh, I opened the stream because thinking nobody was here. 
because there is no late there's no on time saying i appreciate replay viewers and apparently because mo was like super early in the chat i have now hurt his feeling and so this is going to be a theme tonight so armin Asim's web store cool <laughs> Anyway, can't take either of them. Religious differences. Maybe if you explain to them that you worship the replay viewers, man. <laughs> All right, so I got to get rid of that sheet of paper. Off to the paper shredder. So what is in here? Ah, here we go. Yes. Okay. Battle chasers showing up. Adventures continue. We don't care. I got here early and left. Oh, Felix, I'm sorry. I should sing one song to that chick. Do you really want to hurt me? So, you know, who is that? Boy George. So I don't understand American mythology. They have this one on campaign, but it was also in the shop catalog at the same time. I don't get it. So Battle Chasers. I don't remember if this is black and white or color, so we'll take a look. Okay, it's color. Or it was color. I guess. Yeah, I don't have a description for this, so we shall see. When she's done with him, Blue will be singing Hurt So Good. <laughs> Too many pages. I've never confronted her about some of the crap because she is one of those pushy types who um, constantly talks over and interrupts. It's just like, never mind. You know? So there we go. I like the style. I mean, it's kind of cartoony. Did this change styles? Are we in a backup story? Yeah, I think the art gets, gets a little bit, just a hair looser by the end. Slight change, not a big deal. Anyway, don't know what it's about. Don't remember the promo blurb, but um, I'll know when I read it. <laughs> so. And this was a book that went through several campaigns. It was even promoted. I was in the gym and saw this book promoted on some news article because uh, they have TVs in the cardio room. You know, one thing I appreciate about my coach is if he notices that I don't speak to or work with this, you know, this woman, he doesn't give a shit. He does not care. He's like, that's on you, whatever. All right, enough about that. Maybe I shouldn't have told the story because now we're kind of on it. So my fault. Let's see what we got, Sire. Silk, silky pages, I guess. Almost like they're from Australia. Tip that up a little. Very dark. Okay. Looks like a slightly less experienced artist, I think. Let's check the credits. Uh, written and created by Michael Dulce. Artwork by Dan Leister. L-E-I-S-T-E-R. Or if that's in English, Leister. Nah, I think it's Leister. Okay. So you ever, you ever see good, you know, pencil and ink work, or good pencil work, and then you see the ink work, and then you see the colors, and it's it's like each layer removes a quality from the, the pencil work. I kind of wonder if that's what's happening. But there are different teams for different sets of pages. So, hmm. so jump to the middle. Yeah. I'm just jumping through it. A lot of 
ladies are like that. Pushy in public. Kittens in the bedroom. Let's see, chapter three. Yeah, this is a trade paperback. So not bad. A lot of dark coloring. More than just if everything happens at night. Like here, can't really... It's almost blurry. I mean, I need glasses, but it is kind of blurry. Anyway. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know what you're referring to. <laughs> Eighteen. That's not what I paid. Back in the sleeve. Okay, so that's LCS stuff. One more. We got one more. And I know what this is. This, oops, there we go. This is whoop. Yeah. Okay, that's just a barcode. I thought it was a full label for some reason. Where are we? There we go. Ah. Reach for the scissors. This is there we go. A, um, a number two. One that I kind of already looked at. Oh, I missed some. <sighs> Nothing's ever clean. There we are. These are nice. These little bubble things. So if you check the Wikipedia page on my ch about my channel, you'll know that I reviewed Death's Dream Kingdom quite some time ago. And, whoa, neat. The stickers are a material that makes the, uh, the plastic react. That's interesting. There we go. And this was about the spaceship that's powered by some kind of alien power from a captured alien, but it's the alien that uh, invades your dreams and drives you insane and some other stuff like that. It's called Death's Dream Kingdom. There you go. I got two covers on this one, which is unusual. Uh, these stickers over here are from his other pair of books that may become a bigger series called Whitaker Knox. It's about a wizard. And there's the other cover. Uh, this is the guy who made his book. Did it, did he? It's a box, yes. <laughs> if I hear someone say 18, it's, such a pretty... it's fizz. But Oh, okay, I just got that. <laughs> I am I was surprised that that book was only $18 because usually three-issue trades are a little bit more. Well, they seem like they're a little bit more in the indie sphere. And, uh, and I did not pay that much. So there we go. So this was the book that was... All, actually, I wrote him when I found, uh, what do you call it, typos in the preview pages. But this is the book where he, he creates a bajillion AI images and then modifies them. So he'll take pieces of AI images and Photoshop together bits like this with, you know. So this might be three or four different images blended together. Uh, but he's using a lot of AI to create raw materials for that he then assembles in Photoshop to create the book. So, yeah. And I've never heard of this book before. <gasps> you, but you watch my channel sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is number two. He just completed the, uh, the, what do you call it, the campaign for number three on Kickstarter. And then, of course, he's got back issues if you want it as he goes. So you'll be able to get one through four. Um, did, you, did I see the, the, uh, by the way, I don't know how to say his name correctly. Aerith. Did I see the Aerith flash sale? All floppies, $5 each. No, I did not. Do you got a link? Do you have a link for that? Did, did, did 
be nope, wrong one. So here's your nightmare fuel. All right. So he wouldn't have to pay our colors, but he still goes with weebish black and white. <laughs> hey, his, his other book was colored. His other book looked like acrylic paintings. It, it was cheap. Well, ugh, that's gruesome. You know, on the camera, when I look up in my screen, this almost looks photographic, but it does not look photographic in the book. So, yeah. Wow. All right. So, right at the end of book one, somebody released the monster onto the ship as they're traveling through dimensions to find a new planet for their, their home world, which is literally about to, to disintegrate because of the war with these aliens. And there's the alien right down there. There, there's his head. Um, his face is over here. That's a little washed out. Let's see if I can move that lamp. Yeah, right there. He's facing this way. So this white is just background right there. His, his body is the black over there with arms. If that makes you see it. Aerith tape one floppy. Thanks for the link. Cool. The monster they unleash presents AI on a subconscious level. <laughs> yes. All right. Put these back home. Okay, there's some book I did not want to forget. Oh, yeah, good news. Uh, where is... This was my reminder. Okay, if you've seen on my channel this gigantic, long stream from me stumbling around verbally. Um, <laughs> first, I should explain me stumbling around verbally, which I'm doing right now as I change subjects. <sighs> Water. Okay, <clears throat> so when I get nervous, uh, many things happen. I start talking faster. The thoughts I haven't put together quite cleanly yet, like I need a rehearsal or something, they start to get uh, rephrased multiple times and, and other such annoying things. And then, okay, I'll just leave that there. And then, uh, you know, my, my I'll get more tension in my voice. I won't be as relaxed. I, let me think for a minute. Okay, just relax. Cool. So that happened a lot. And when you guys hit things in the chat, I tend to read them right up front, even interrupting myself, bad habit. So uh, I was on another stream where I was allowed to talk about uh, what do you, uh, Attack on Titan. And I wasn't really concerned with putting my thoughts together first, because usually when I'm streaming there, I get interrupted a ton. It's two ADHD guys together. <laughs> But, but the other guy, Liam, <laughs> turned his attention elsewhere and I never got interrupted. So it was a disaster because <laughs> I hadn't put my thoughts together first, you know? Uh, let's see. Reading my comments immediately is actually a good habit. That's when they're most relevant. Yeah, well, actually, yes. And um, because this is not how you envisioned Adam and Eve. Yes, I did read it. Aha. So anyway, that was an absolute mess and disaster. So I got to be careful of that. And uh, yeah, that, that was terrible. So let's see, I already said that I will repeat things. I already uh, mentioned being nervous. Oh, losing track of, of what I'm saying is not good. And then I can hear my mistakes and then I'll, I will not have the filter capable because ADHD is a, is a uh, deficit in filtration. Like, you know, anyway, uh, like little kids are, but uh, delay, it's a delayed development thing. Anyway, the uh, the filter won't catch that I don't have to say out loud, oh, that came out wrong, or oh, that I just said that twice, or something like that. And so that means now there's even more verbiage coming out for people to, to listen to, and it's really hard to listen to. They had a promo, okay. They had a QR card on the promo stream, but it didn't work. Oh, for dwarves versus floppies? Huh, that's messed up. 
Okay. Hopefully you can find the right link. I mean, you know, you know your 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 hobby. So when uh so anyway, and then I was tired because I just worked 14 hours because <laughs> of that server crash. I was really tired. So you add all those things together. It was a disaster. Why that's relevant now is <laughs> related to first man here. Uh, a while ago, I did, did a stream about books being late. And just in case people didn't see it, but that they want the, the why would you bother getting into that late books controversy is actually I was trying to turn the temperature down on the late books controversy. I'm in dwarfs versus lion blue. Oh, okay. I don't have the book. I didn't, um, I don't know what time period that Aerith's books came out, but something about them just didn't appeal to me. And I, I haven't backed any of them, but now that you say $5 floppies, I might take a look. So thanks for the links. Anyway. Um, so yeah. Being exhausted doesn't help. And uh, with all, with everything I've already described and I did that stream where I, what I tried to do was take examples of what are real, honest to God expectations, like forget Indiegogo's deal on your, your product is due. I think, I don't know, 30 or 90 days after your campaign closes or something like that. I don't know. And it's, it's not a little cameo. So you're a lion, not a dwarf. Is that it? So uh, those links are right. Good, good, cool. Boxes are 15. Nice. All right. Anyway, that huge stream could have been shorter if I had rehearsed what I wanted to say first. <laughs> and, and, and the whole idea was if certain things are reasonable, what is within reason? And I gave all these caveats and stuff. And I gave, made an example of Andy Smith saying that he could be on time with his book given you know, a starting point I picked in time and how, how many pages per week does he have done giving, given an announcement that he made and whatnot. Well, good news, Andy just announced that uh he's done with the pencils and inks and i think it's a few pages to color or something like that and then it's going to lettering and pre-press so andy is pulling it off he's he's getting his book out on time not late expected shipment is is uh november he might even be early for all we know so here we go uh wait i'm king of the dwarves says mo no mo is king of the dwarves okay oh the dwarfs okay not dwarves. Sure. <laughs> Grammar will come up later on the stream. So good for Andy Smith. Good job, man. And if you guys want to torture yourselves, you can go back and watch that stream. I think it's the one called Plet, which is the uh, shirt I'm wearing now. And uh, it's, it says like late lattes or something. Anyway, did, did he? I spelled it the correct way instead of the trademarkable way because I knew blue would feel compelled to correct me. In sixth grade, I had a D and D choose your own adventure book, something about dwarves. And that became a question or was it sixth grade or like fifth? Who cares? And that became a question about spelling. <laughs> and, and so I was already told some words because of popular error or double origins will have multiple spellings and it's okay. Moving on. Let's get to a book. Clean the clean the palette. I'm really happy for Andy Smith. Uh, I understand that. Uh, what's his name? One of my other favorite guys, uh, Art Tiber, is is going to be late, and here well he already is, and he knows that. And uh, for him, it's a learning experience, just because his prior books were were rehashes of older material and this one is like completely new so ah, learning experience learning Let's see. sorry mo i didn't see your comment before posting that i wasn't correcting anyone's spelling uh-huh okay grammar fight in the chat uh, he always does that <laughs> yep yep i do where are we, where are we going with this? there's something i'm supposed to grab okay voyage comics so they have published several books. Here's one. And it's, this is old legends of, of Catholic saints. Somebody illustrated it. Sure. They look like comic book illustrations. What do you want? And uh, I got this, but it's really not my thing. Cause I'm not Catholic. <laughs> so look, a bookmark. They got swag. Uh, not being Catholic though. I wondered about getting this from my mom. They have another book like this of essays on Tolkien. If you're interested in that, but it's written by one of their in-house guys. So I don't know about the, uh, the Tolkien quality. If you're Catholic or Christian, you know, what might or might not appeal. I'm not sure. 
and uh yeah even though my mom's in her 80s <laughs> i i buy her the iconic uh books what are they soul finder i get her soul finder hey smiling bandito there we go yes <laughs> sorry smiling bandito it's one name <laughs> so, anyway i get her the soul finder books and she actually reads them so uh so there's that i did try out this other catholic company for this book which is really not worth going over uh in detail uh so they have stuff like this i think i might just pass this on to my mother it, it's really funny how <laughs> some lady in her 80s who is into a lot of um <laughs> it might be a whole a whole lot of murder mysteries like those are her big things to read are murder mysteries uh that she would you know she likes the mysterious aspect and i'm like huh, wonder if she'll like soul finder and she's like comics aren't my thing and then she read it and she's like oh okay she got into it so that's cool for her and then um when i saw her recently i dropped off the third third and fourth soul finder books and she's like and she's like oh hey cool i've got your other ones i'm like they're not mine i gave them to you she's like right i know they're mine and so all right all the important people here catholic is christian <sighs> fine if you're not catholic but you're protestant there you go and i'm a protestant protestant <laughs> like, like there's so much bs out there right now anyway so voyage is the name of the company they put out these books i did finally get around to reading a little bit of this one but this one phantom phoenix was the first one i saw i don't know why it just was and then i picked up this one and now they've got more books and whatnot and some of them are of interest some are not this one the finian book this is a trade paperback of i think one through four Please sign up for Black as Hell mailing list. I receive a 16-page book add-on free with your backing. Cool. Coming soon. Um, this one, it's not quite a story I think anybody here would find interesting. It's more of a biography type. The artwork, it's it's uh, serviceable. You know, it's not like it's erroneous, but it's also not really what I think people are interested in or excited by. Um, it, it does improve over time. I'm only an issue and a half out into these four. And it goes to number seven and then it ends. So that's that's not really there. <clears throat> okay. They have other books where I'm looking at it going, yeah, that's that's cheesy for children. You know? So today's opening band, book, opening band, whatever, is Phoenix, the Phantom Phoenix. Finally got around to reading this. Here we go. So we got all the always appreciated. Sorry. What is Samwise grabbing on the cover there instead of the ring? This isn't the Tolkien book. <laughs> Smart ass. Uh, where'd I put it? <laughs> oh, it's over here. That looks like a sword, but I think it's a crucifix. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, we're already here. Mo money, mo problems. Not with GoFundMo. Back today with confidence. <laughs> Looks like they edited out Phoenix, Phoenix's iconic nipples. <laughs> I don't understand why he has the belt on the outside of his trench coat. But I guess it keeps the trench coat from flying around. You know, flap, flapping around in, entirely. He is a mix of Batman and a little bit of Spider-Man with what his cane does. This is part of his cane. Yeah, we have a uh, hero with a disability. Issue one was a little bit short. They're going for a lot of classic stuff here. Uh, the language does fall back at a certain point where I think in the second book, our lady character, take a look here. She says she she has a linguistic anachronism because this is supposed to be like 1920s or no, um, between World War One and Two, so yeah, 1920s, uh, before the Depression, type er, er, uh, thing in Chicago. And what does the lady say? I mean, we'll get to this point later. Something strange happened. Oh, I can't find it. Yeah, can't find it. All right, no big deal. So his name now escapes me. I <laughs> the option was there to either tie the belt around the coat or you know button it. <laughs> yeah, I'm always happy to promote. That's that's nice of you. 
Oh, you mean promote? Okay. Linguistic anachronisms are not 23 skidoo in my book. Fix this now. I've uh, been watching GoFundMe. It's actually putting up some good numbers. Good to see. Cool. Is is GoFundMo a real thing? <laughs> oh, here's one I missed. Uh, having black as hell on his desk is highly anticipated. You're not anybody to, in indie comics till you hit Blue's desk. Thank you. You're, you're bordering on sycophancy here. It's okay. I'm not that important. Anyway, um, standard. Notice everybody's got these little masks on. This is like, what is, the, you know, why are we doing this in comics today? But this seems like they're trying to bring back a little bit of like original Batman and um, and that, that sort of styling. Don't know why. The Catholicism or religiosity isn't totally heavy handed in this. In fact, I'd say it's not. It just sort of shows up here and there. There is an Alfred character for our Phantom Phoenix. But primarily, we have cops chasing this dude. Narration starts here, and look who's flying in the sky like Spider-Man. So he's got little, he's got his own power set going. We find out later that he is handicapped and or disabled, as you may put it. I'm going to bet for the time period without proper surgeries, he probably blew out the la the lateral collateral ligament of his knee, and is unstable. And that's. That's it. I mean, you can live and walk without that. It's just painful. And back at this period of time, physical therapy was just beginning to figure out that activity was better than rest in many situations, you know, for a lot of situations. Um, you mean, uh oh, just a moment. There we go. Knocked over a piece of equipment under my desk. And you mean handy capable? Yes, I do. Because as we're going to see, he's quite capable. And this is this is funny. Dear coppers, <laughs> as the cops miss the burg the uh, bank robber, burglar, whatever. How are how are banks being robbed at night? This is all at night. So like, what? <laughs> uh, did he? Mo's very successful at keeping unwanted persons away. Okay, except that I I want Jay Ryan here. <laughs> so. Good vibes. I'm teasing you, Mo. I, maybe I shouldn't push too hard on that. I am just teasing. Okay. Good vibes. Uh, do, 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 do. GoFundMo is very difficult to find. It's how I keep away the hackers. Oh, okay. Yep, I am missing some. Anyway, dear coppers, I, I love the in time. Next time, lay off the spuds and the criminals will, won't be so hard to catch. And it's a little Phantom Phoenix logo there. <laughs> so, so that's cool. Our heavier cop here, I forget his name. I'm trying to remember names. I just remembered the Phantom Phoenix, his name's Martin. Uh, making us look ridic ridiculous. What the heck is his name? Anyway, so he goes home. He lives in a church. In fact, we find out later he lives in the basement of a church. We don't know why. But his little Alfred is the pastor of, or, you know, the local father, or sorry, local priest, father name I forget, at that church. And he knows what he's doing, which is kind of weird to me. But <laughs> if you've ever asked a priest or, or Jewish person questions and all they do is ask you questions back that miss the point of what you're asking, that's what this guy is in this issue. <laughs> he's different later, but so far here, all he's, he, does, he doesn't even ask good Socratic questions where they're supposed to make you think and find answers. It's nothing like that. Anyway, we come in here. There's a mob boss whose name is uh, Flambeau. I only remember that because he's dressed very, he's dressed very flamboyantly. And uh, the Phantom Phoenix is getting in the way of the burglaries and robberies they want to commit. So he's very angry. He just stabbed his knife that he's cutting his flower with through the table right there. It's a sturdy knife and a wimpy table. And uh, he brings in somebody else to clean, to do a cleanup job and get the Phantom Phoenix killed. So here we are on our next robbery going down at night. I guess this is late evening or something or sunset, I guess back here and times when banks are normally closed. And this time they were setting him up to chase him down and he gets surrounded by mobsters. So he drops a flash bang in that era. Okay. Uh, and they, they go to shoot him and this cop has knocked out his partner in order to pursue, uh, there we are in order to pursue uh, whatever. Oh yeah. It's right over here. knocks out his partner having shot at the Phantom Phoenix and 
this equipment on his leg is because he's actually handy capable. So there we are. Uh, he drops a smoke grenade to get away from it. And he now knows this guy's a dirty cop. Doesn't know what to do. Runs into another cop. Of course, it's a lady. He's panicking. So he he's like, I'll come back for this stuff later. And for whatever reason, it doesn't make it into the trash bin. So they, it's on the street. And of course, the mobsters find it. This is the int- introduction of the love interest. So I'll get that out of the way. I just realized I was thinking fund my comic, not go fund me. I, I'm a, I'm a chat rusty. <laughs> yeah. Blue, understandably, assume we were talking about gunf- go fund mo. Yeah. Well, there are things I know that just vanish as soon as I start streaming. So I'd say my apologies, but you already know. Anyway, um, so here's our interest, and she takes him to his home because he doesn't want to go to the hospital for whatever. He just needs to fix his equipment. And she does finally ask, like, why are you wearing the funny uniform? And yes, he was an aviator before. And this is our introduction to our, our all of our characters. We get a nice, straightforward introduction out of this. It's not problematic uh, in, in I think, any way. It is a little bit weird, which reminds me of just how, and this, the fact that he lives in a basement, like, doesn't phase her. And it's, it's kind of funny, like, uh, oh, hey, Poland. <laughs> it's kind of funny to me how, how women, there's such a variety of women, but there, there are two. I've been around such picky women for so long that my impression is I, I forget just how accepting a lot of women are. Like, they don't care if a single dude lives in a very cheap utilitarian way because to any one particular woman that could mean, Oh, he's being frugal. He's being careful. It's all these positive things. And then, um, (laughs) it is a reunion show. (laughs) Glad to see he's out of the gulag. So, so anyway, uh, and, and so, uh, unlike my sisters (laughs) who are really harsh, um, at least some of them, not all of them, but you know, they would look at this, you live in a basement thing <laughs> really negatively. And no, no, a lot of women are very wonderful. So that's always cool. Uh, the cop, we, we get the confirmation by the end of the book. Yes, this cop is dirty. He's working for Flambeau. For Flambeau. Uh, he, Flambeau is going to have him killed, but he says, wait a minute, I have this. This could be of use, etc." Then we move on real quick, real quick to book two. Uh, Indeed, Poland escaped the White House dungeons. If you heard that boop, that means my Mac is done processing a video. All right. Anyway, book two. We're still going with these these masks. And this isn't really a setup, but he's waiting for them. Disrupts their burglary. It's not a robbery. Well, I guess one error in this book, I'd have to double check. I think he keeps saying robbery when he means burglary. Robbery is confronting a person with a threat in order to take something from them, like a mugging. And and then, so if you're robbing a bank, it means you threaten the people in the bank. A burglary is just you went in and picked things up and walked out with them. So it could be breaking and entering and burglary. So that kind of thing. Anyway, my dad was key on words. Art. The art in here is more than serviceable. I think it fits the superhero style pretty well. Good anatomy in in all kinds of ways, including the clothing. So the way the clothing shapes is proper and stuff like that. Cool character. And in issue two, we do get background to the character. While he's disrupting this burglary and, and busting them and tying them up, that's key. I think he tied them up outside, which is good. Uh, what happens is somebody throws in a stick of dynamite, blows the place up. We see this person running away in what looks like a superhero costume type tights. That's all we see for the rest of the book. We don't see more of that. Oh, and these gloves. We don't see anything more of them. Anyway, uh, the dynamite goes off. He's lucky to survive. Thankfully, these guys are tied up outside, so they're not dead. And there's his, his cat. That's actually his cat from the church. And that brings him to a flashback, but this flashback is told in two parts. Did he pause with these robbery burglary shenanigans? He's practically committing a lingu- linguistic anachronism in, in spirit, if not in practice. <laughs> okay, I forget what the lady in here says, but I, I I thought that's not what they say. That's that's not that's a modern thing. Anyway, he was in World War One. Um, he shoots somebody down, and he kind of wants to showboat a little bit, and so he gets they get shot down because of it. 
they aim for the trees to break their fall no parachutes for whatever reason and i think that maybe they didn't have good parachutes then but no parachutes he he's able to survive through a tree landing on his knee down here thus busting up probably several ligaments and then when we finish that one later the, the reason the explosion brought him back to it as he's having memories from here to there new memories um his co-pilot is dying and there's got there's a uh, sorry gasoline i guess because or kerosene leaking and there's an explosion um and that's it so he's carrying this this weight of guilt so i uh, do, 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 do. okay church cats create hazards of work, of work environment yeah actually that's in this this book that he's allowed at the church because he keeps the mice away <laughs> Uh, great. A hazardous work environment for church mice. Do, do, do. Uh, the smart ones work together, keeping each other employed. Okay. Mice and cats. Uh, what else do we get out of this? She is actually standing up to the other cops. That's cool. They show her evidence from this explosion that F Phantom Phoenix's stuff was found. For whatever reason, she goes back to this guy. She doesn't know that he's the Phoenix or she suspects it, but she's not saying so. Goes back to uh, Martin here. And shows him, you know, how, how are things going? Because she's doing regular patrols anyway, so she's walking by. Talks to him, how are things going and whatnot. But she actually leaves the evidence with him after he says, or no, I'm, yeah, she leaves the evidence with him when he says something I think is really cool. And it's just language again. Um, so she pulls out the, the mask and goggle, or the, the hood and goggles. And she says, um, do, 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 an explosion? Was anyone hurt? Did they catch the culprits? No, but an officer did find the, uh, the cap and goggles of the Phantom Phoenix. I always thought he was a myth. Characters of sloppy officers made up uh, to cover their mistakes. Now I think he might be uh, the villain behind all of this. The, the eight had to refuel mid-flight uh, for Bancroft's war. Okay. Um, what is it? I th uh, that, is, that is strange. I always thought he was a good guy. But is he a fool or a nitpick? A nitpick. Okay. Interesting word. So they're trying to keep some things, I think, uh, setting appropriate. She asks, what do you mean? And he says, if the Phantom Phoenix is sloppy enough to leave these behind after an explosion, shouldn't they be as dirty as the bag? You know, the debris and soot that's on the bag. And it goes on from there. So the writers are paying attention. They are setting some, some things up in detail. They're not overdoing it. Here is something I think is a mistake is... After talking to his mentor inside about what's going on, there's somebody being mugged in the alley. So he hops out there to help. And uh, the guy the guy is now holding a hostage, the woman he was mugging. And she, uh, he's got his finger on the trigger already. If I remember from what I've heard from snipers, you got to be really careful going for a headshot because they, in the when the nervous system severs, you can get a reaction that'll, that'll still pull the trigger anyway. So you got to be really careful about that. Do, do, do. Aussies and Florida, Florida men are kindred spirits. And Mobig says, now I think he might be the villain behind all of this. For real? For real? No cap? Oh boy. <laughs> nice pun. I like it. Anyway, he saves her, but this brings out that she is scared of him. The And then we find out that our normal villains, she's afraid of him, moves on. He, he questions his, his life choices. We find out at the end that these guys don't actually know who set off the dynamite, but it's really convenient for them and was a good time for the setup that they were working through the cops to get to get Phantom Phoenix uh, uh, slandered. So that's the summary of the two books so far. Number three is in pre-order. If, if you want to go for three books at a time, I think these are like six bucks. So for 18 bucks and a little shipping. So for 24 bucks, you can get uh, probably about, what is going to be like over 65 pages for, for of, you know, an okay book nothing wrong with it that's just that's just the story uh let's see the art is better than serviceable uh i already mentioned language like a dozen times uh oh characters i think are they're not shallow that's good um they're not overly complicated for getting in and getting to know uh they all speak with different voices that's important so yeah i'll keep reading it you know like it's oh i i know what it is it feels a little young for me, and I think the lack of complexity is because this really is meant for all ages. That's it. So there's my my review. Uh, it's an okay book. All right. <laughs> you know, I do say stupid things when I'm uh, when I'm thinking, and I don't want to forget, or I'm trying to remember stuff I may have forgotten. 
and I don't want to forget things. And that's also when I'll start repeating and looping. So it's more than an okay book. It's actually quaint and enjoyable. So if you want something plain, simple, quick read, there it is. And it's not expensive either. So that's for them. Oh yeah. And the Catholicism is, and it isn't overbearing at one point. Um, when he's questioning what he's done before he goes out for the, the mugging I just showed with the lady in the alley, he, uh, how he says, he gets reminded by the priest that he's not God basically. And like, that's about as religious as it gets so far, you know? And I, I think it's good for people to see that kind of thing. You know, even if you're not religious, just to have that influence in your life. So, all right, I'll take a quick break. Do, do, do. Yes. Poland, aren't you happy that I'm supporting uh, Catholic comic books, even though I'm not Catholic? <laughs> I am the mortal enemy of Catholics. <laughs> so. And for anyone who doesn't know church history, I'm a Lutheran. <laughs> so. No, no, not those Lutherans, the other ones. We're the ones who don't or ordain uh, lesbians. <laughs> yeah, and you know, anti-religious people are probably the most legalistic. They just make their own religion and it's usually very legalistic. <laughs> you should start looking into central bank digital currency and rereading all the apocalyptic passages scary stuff man okay here we go i am enjoying the book testament so i have to be a dork here we go i'm not jesus christ i've come to accept that gareth orange i don't know who that is or garth 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 orange okay uh, not the non-binary God, uh, Jesus with two fathers, brand of Lutheran, <laughs> right? That's not my brand of Lutheran. <laughs> Some people tried to hijack the Lutheran church, Missouri synod LCMS with that, with the seeker driven purpose driven crap. And, uh, thankfully they called it the blaze movement, but thankfully it didn't, it didn't take. And then the, uh, AALC actually uh, is where my pastor got hired, um, but he's actually a pastor for three congregations right now because there's such a shortage, and two of them are LCMS. But uh, he, uh, let's just say that he was doing stuff online, and trolls online who just you know want to argue about crap started going after him for saying you can't do communion online because you're not all gathered in one place and blah, blah, blah. It gets technical after that. Okay. So sadly the head of the LCMS who I've met or not LCMS, the head of the AALC who, whom I've met, we've, we've talked, it's, it was good. Um, I like him, nice guy, but the online trolls kind of got to him and said, you can't really, <laughs> you mean you're not attending the star Wars church, dude, don't get me started. <laughs> so anyway, Everyone needs saving some time, like me on my streams. Okay, if maybe I put, if I put them on a better time of day. <laughs> and, anyway, uh, but yeah, the uh, the trolls from online got to the head of the uh, the ALC and started this huge argument. And it's uh, I don't want to say exactly how it finished, um, but we're doing communion online, and all of that went down was a gigantic fight just because people are trolling and. Uh, then the COVID started and then all these churches started going online. <laughs> it was great. I've been there since 2015, but anyway, you can't spell communion without the com. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there we are. This is a uh, Testament by Chimera. And yeah, we're not going to dox his real name because that's mean. Ah, oh, don't you love that sound? I enjoyed this book. Uh, this, this is a book. It surprised me in how quick it was. And it's simpler than I was expecting. So number one, with my fantasy, because this is mostly a fantasy world. They do have some armor and plasma blasters, but otherwise it's mostly sword fantasy. Uh, you know, sword and magic. It's just a different kind of magic. Whereas Queen would say it's a kind of magic. Got to come with a map. Always come with a map. 
So these books are great. Or the maps are great. I mean, uh, book two did not have a map, but the supplemental had a map in it. And we'll take a look at all those. Uh, do, do, waiting for that to pop up. Thanks for the explanation. Trolls just want your time. Yeah. Uh, today was Ignatius. I don't, street is okay. They have a street named after him. That's nice. That's really cool. Anyway, the Ignatius of Loyola Street Day, uh, uh, feast day, Luther's favorite. Cool. By the way, it's Saint. I'm teasing. Um, my idea of saints is different from Catholics. So, and okay, finally came up. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. We're doing all we can, but I'm not Jesus Christ. I've come to accept that now. Okay. You know what? I'm going to take. Not to hijack my own stream, because you know what else would I do? I'm actually gonna. Oh, it's a movie, or uh, sorry, it's a novel. Okay, it's a horror parody. <laughs> I'll be around more, little by little. Okay, and I don't know when I'm going to change the time for this for the show okay good to see you boys good to see you poland he probably has to go to bed he'll be around more testament volume two actually it, do i have the links correct um do, 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 if you go to my set of links felix you'll see the indiegogo sign up page for testament volume three as well just in case you don't have it already all righty so oh yeah i wasn't cheesy yet this is the Old Testament, and this is the New Testament. So, move on from there. You're, I'm sorry. I'll I'll show myself. Oh wait, there's no there, there's no show. All right. Anyway, getting into the book. <clears throat> I think I almost have to do this one upside right. I like the world building straight up. Oh, Got to read the credits. And the world building is fairly simple, a little at a time, and then you you get enough of it. Uh, I, I liked it. So written by Camara, uh, art by Giuliano da, Giuliano da Silva, colors by Marcos Martins, bonus story by Preston Acevedo, letters by or letters by Eric Weathers, front cover by Donald Delay and Marcus uh, Martins, edits and pre press by Steve Dye, logo by Bob Stone. So logo. And this is the second printing. I was not capable of backing books when this first one came out. And thankfully I was able to get the, uh, the book, uh, the second printing on book two, instead of having to scrape around for book one. All right. So let's see. Do you mod? Yes, I do. That's good. I'm a three time winner of his golden wrench award. <laughs> So our main character is here, and he is 18 years old. Um, the, the age isn't exactly clear up front. I think there's a lot of good attention to detail throughout a lot throughout this. Notice the blue eyes everywhere, the blue crystals. The blue, blue crystals somehow emit a chemical, or they, they, they rub off in some way. That's a chemical that causes mutations, like this four-eyed lizard. And um, immediately we're kind of introduced to who he is and how he is. He's not exactly a Mary Sue, but there are some overtones of Mary Sue Ness to him. Our main character, his name is Carl. So Carl, uh, what is, what is the male of a Mary Sue? I don't know, but he's uh, bandits are coming for him. Autopilot on the, on the motorcycle, nice mix of technology and, and uh, primitive going on. He's able to shoot, one motorcycle because he doesn't want bandits hitting him up. And this guy has a, has a grenade and they're trying to steal his crystals and he reaches over and pops out a sword or long dagger. I think it's a really long dagger cuts the guy's, the guy's hand and then says very intelligently as he's riding away, I'd worry more about that grenade you just dropped, you know, than your fingers. So Carl, the Mar Mary Sue, actually it's Carl with a K. So we'll just, I'll take care of that for you. I got you. Taking care of you bandito. So anyway, um, we get to see the world and he's selling the crystals. He's saying, this is my last, I'm going to the city. 
he's biting on his silver, not recommended. And and who are the oh the goblins? I thought they were all extinct. No, they're not. They're all, oh, by the way, they're on a different planet. It's called Vaughn, V O N. Uh, do, do, do. They say Gary Stu, but I would still prefer Mary Sue, uh, Marty Sue. <laughs> he can keep the Sue because he's a boy named Sue type badass. All right. <laughs> he gets to the city and he's an idiot. So he takes his dog who is mutated. Look, I love this. Hey, I got you something and throws in a whole rat. <laughs> so the dog is huge. Got horns in the back. So he's a mutant. Notice the blue eyes. Again, at some point in here, we notice that he has blue eyes, the same color or very similar color to this, just barely darker. And they're not glowing there or anything like that, but they are apparent at one point. And you wonder like, is that a detail that we need to care about? So here he gets, he recognizes this priest or Bishop has a little flashback to when the mentors who were raising him were killed by the soldiers who came with that Bishop. That's, sorry. That's the whole flashback here. Um, these are the people who were mentoring him. We meet him later. So skipping some details. This gets a little bit, it feels convoluted, but it's actually over simple. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and so it's the, the book proceeds in a little bit of an oversimplistic way. So, Oh, so they do one thing at a time say, Oh, we're going to go to this city and kick some guy's ass. Okay. And then they walk in and then they kick the guy's ass. And there isn't a lot of, of a lot of depth in how they, they team up with locals and, and whatnot through the two volumes. So it it is just a very clean, quick adventure that also makes it um, back to work. Okay. Have a good time smiling. Bandito. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, it is a, a quick, clean, smooth adventure in that sense, but it makes things seem a little too easy, especially as Carl starts to discover he has powers. And, and let's see. So they're they're going after the, I think in this realm, it's a king. Oh, I'm sorry. The planet Vaughn is segregated into five regions, and each region is ruled by a, war, a warlord. In this, in this area, they call him a king. Um, now, I do like how... We are given a little bit of depth into what's really going on behind the world by the by the end of volume two, and it's not a retcon; it's depth. So that's cool. Uh, like how the bloodlines for the king work, it's not as complicated as something like, forgive me for mentioning it, as Attack on Titan. But <laughs> it's which which I really like. But anyway, it's it's simpler than that. It's not wrong. It's it's just uh, I got lost a little bit in trying to keep straight who was whose uncle in, in which way. And if somebody, you know, if whether or not when they go to the Oriental Island is the emperor there somehow related to Carl here or not. Now Carl's an idiot. Uh, let's see in this scene, he meets kind of a transient guy. I see your new face. Where are you from? L leaf village, which L E I F I say leaf because in German that'd be life, but in uh for dutch guys i think that's leaf anyway uh far from far from home uh friendly tip the patrol guards are on the lookout for a raider where he comes from his people are called raiders even though he's not uh which here we go again i don't know anyway uh even though he's not a bandit the way we saw earlier in the book the guys on motorcycles he's like that's right uh, yeah, so try to stay out of their way. Say, you don't mind me asking, what kind of necklace is that? Everybody notices his necklace. Just put it in your shirt. Like, it is so li it, it is such a problem for him that everybody's going after the necklace and is interested in it. Why is it hanging outside? Put it in your shirt. <laughs> like he sh And he doesn't do that. Um, he says, oh, I remember. That's what those missionaries wear when they preach about their God. Are you one of them? No, it's just a necklace. Why? Why all the questions, old man? Just curious, forgot to introduce myself. I'm George. Well, I'm not looking for friends, so piss off. Okay. That that does get rid of people. It's good to put up a barrier, but uh, a little too too harsh. And he doesn't put the necklace away. So anyway, uh, whatever's going on with the head of the military and the king, he reminds him that the mutant humans live in this pit down there, and it's blatant that the mutant humans will eat another human. So he's threatening for, they want to find Carl. 
And apparently it's because Carl is his nephew and the proper heir to the throne for whatever reason. I say whatever reason, because it's like, well, they have a king on the throne. Why does he need to get rid of Carl? And that becomes apparent when you put two and two together from the end of issue two. And so I'll just say it now. The king is being possessed by an evil spirit and Carl has the ability to defeat that evil spirit being not possessed. And so they need to taint, you know, capture and either eliminate or, t or taint Carl and yeah, take your pick. Anyway, uh, he gets confronted by guards who are looking for him. And the thing is you, you wonder like, how would, why would they be looking for him? It's a little weird. He gets saved by a gang of other people. And we start to learn that because of who his mother is and whatnot, he's of Royal lineage. And that's why they're looking for him. Oh, okay. Thanks. That's cool. Now we know. Uh, so it's a little weird to walk into town and being like, Hey, did you know that the, the King is looking for you? It's like, why the hell would the King know me? Um, but earlier in the book, <clears throat> let's see, or, uh, you know, why it, it seems a little weird, but earlier in the book, he makes mention of, he has a score to set, settle with the King. So there's already bad blood there, but that goes back to his mentors being killed. It doesn't make sense for why, it doesn't make sense yet to the reader. So why is the king looking for him? We do find out later. I mean, you know, that's that's laid out. It's not bad writing, pardon me. Um, I'm making it sound like it's it's bad, but it's not. Anyway, uh, we've dispatched your entire raid clan, and yet you resist. How many of you? How many of you do we have to kill before you hand over the boy? So he would know from when he was ten years old, even though he looks younger here, but he's ten. Um, how much uh, that? they're they're killing everybody in order to get him so he knows he's being pursued but he doesn't know why and so we don't know why um and how the king you know why would the warrant on him still say he has this necklace like you know things like that can disappear you never know so anyway do, 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 do. moving along uh, oh there's a little here we go again oh that was in regard to my weebery yeah 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 <laughs> Uh, where were we? De -de 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 -de. Oh yeah, so things move a little quickly for me, and uh, the the complex the complexity, not complication, in the background is okay. The uh, simplicity in the foreground feels a little weird to me because I'm I'm used to I'm I'm really well. Okay, I just got the the most recent dvds of the of that anime <laughs> so my weebery and and so i'm drawn back into that world and and all the complexities of it so reading other books is like what is this you know like like it yeah I, i'm a little um not burned but the the other way I'm, I'm a little too in tune with one one world rather than another so i i actually read this as slowly as i could to uh make sure that i really got into it i by the way i like the the uh, world he's built this is just a really cool world we'll get to the maps later so he meets he meets this guy because of the gang that saved him uh so here's this dude and he's a dick for no reason like it's just he's just unwise you know he's very standoffish very hormonal for an 18 year old you know or being an 18 year old uh he he wants to be his own man that kind of thing but he's mentioning that he's trying to find his his mom. Oh, let's see what we got. And the original reason they team up is because this is a group of re uh, rebels going up against the king. That's it. And so he knows that. They're, so somehow they know they're all going to be on the same side for whatever reason. They figure if the guards are hassling you, you're probably good for us. So they work together and he hot headedly sees the bishop who was there when his mentors were killed and with his helmet off goes and follows the two guards who have the Bishop. The, the dude's an idiot right? and wants to go kill the Bishop. So that's how he gets captured uh, right there. <sighs> Why? Why are you doing this? So, so now to say he's an idiot is not a criticism of Chimera's writing. It's actually good writing. He has a solid character who is consistent and who grows over time. That's cool. We'll get rid of the, the, the Marty Sue stuff in a minute. Anyway, so he wakes up and he hears them talking and they're explaining to him that he should have some kind of power because he's in the lineage of the king and what that means. So we start to get this here. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I'm waiting for that one. <laughs> a hormonal 18 year old would be beating the bishop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's called self defense. Anyway, um, <laughs> by the way, I went to a Catholic high school and one of the non clergy teachers there was apparently, he's also one of the soccer coaches. Apparently, a bunch of students would go to his apartment because they could drink. Yeah, I wonder what was going on. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. So he's busting. So he eventually busts out of... Oh, he's taking an electric shock as a form of torture from this guy, which knocks him out, and he has a flashback memory to the bearded guy we saw killed earlier. And he's thinking about it and realizes, I have a power. Now, the only thing I don't like about how this was presented, so yes, we're getting some negatives here, is it would have been good if this were presented as, uh, you know, maybe put this on the next page and show us a little more flashback to him remembering feeling something, uh, you know, f feeling something or other related to this power, you know, like when he was 13 or 14, uh, living on the run on his own or something like that. Uh, or being trained by his mentor, which we'll see later in a different flashback, then somehow the, this royal power that he has, it's just a little too easy that he says, oh, I have a power and I already know how to just click it on, like no training. That's where I say, okay, this is a little Mary Sue-ish, like that. And then we'll get rid of it in, in the, I think, the beginning of book two. So he's able to super, you know, he, he goes superhero, busts through stuff. And like most anime characters, overdoes it and tires himself out on his first exploit. But it, it is how they finally defeat the king. Notice the eyes are orange on this being. And that's not, that's not the king, but the king comes in very frustrated that, you know, everybody fails him all the time. So he has to go do it himself. And this is them beating up on the giant, on the giant robot. Um, yeah, here's the angry king. And look, he's super powered as well, wouldn't you know? <laughs> but his eyes are orange, not blue. And that, that becomes a detail for later. And then they they get away and they're on their way to the Asian kingdom on a train, even though the Asian kingdom is across the sea. Anyway, got some books, some background stuff. And here we get a flashback to when this kid... The, now, these guys are raiders, so they are attacking people on... on uh, or attacking other people on motorcycles. And uh, here's our blonde dude with the beard. Uh, and this is how they go to an orphanage and they find this kid, which is Carl. And then they start training him. And uh, let's see. So how much did you say? Three silver, three silver Reichs or Reichs. I don't know. He's a bit scrawny. How long has he been here? I've been taking care of this boy since his mother or since he was four, his mother just left him here one day taking care of him, huh? And he's all red and, and black eyed and whatnot, whatnot. Yeah, it's not my fault. I manage the orphanage myself. And this one talks back all the time. He steals food from other children and constantly gets into fights. All right. So they're starting to train him to fight and he's not doing well. He's not putting anything into it. And so they encourage him, like, imagine the thing you're swinging the sword at is the, uh, the woman from the orphanage. <laughs> and so bingo, it works. And then, you know, he said, okay, now you'll fight somebody for real and just knocks him down and says, we're over for the day. And then they start telling legends, but they, they call this a bonus story. It really is part of reading the book. It's not like it's optional and you'll read it later. If you get these books, read the bonus stories. They're cool. So here's a flashback to him training. It would be interesting to see something where he starts to uh, have power, but he doesn't understand it. Yeah, that would be cool. Do, do, do. Book two. And yeah, I'm going to try and rush through book two. So I really enjoyed the book in the end, despite the, the slight Mary Sunis and despite the slight, um, oh yeah, uh, despite the slight quickness of everything, like we're going to go attack the king and then they go attack the king. You know, it, it it's like, I'm waiting for an, another shoe to drop to make the story a little bit more complex. Oh, we got extras here. There you go. There's that. Trading card. Magnuson. 
Leonard von Magnussen, six foot eight, two hundred fifty pounds. Eye color blue, of course. Hair black. Capital city. So. And of course, some six AM stickers. Oh, always. All right. So they're vital to the experience. These sounds more like bonus holes now than bonus stories. <sighs> it took me a second to get that. <laughs> Yes, they're vital to the experience. Don't skip them. This, for the volume one was a standard, uh, in the second printing was a standard shiny cover. And so you could see where it gets rub marks on it because of that. This is a more matte cover. It's not the super soft touch. It's more like a plain matte. If it's the soft touch, actually it might be. It's just not the the hyper soft touch where you feels like you're, you're grabbing a piece of, of uh, latex or something. It's a lot nicer. It might just be regular matte, you know. Um, so does not need any kind of, uh, what do you call it, spot gloss or anything. It's fine how it is. Obviously, I've got the Clayton Barton cover. Really like it. I like the texture of the pages. And this one's longer. So they make it to the Asian kingdom, which is actually on a different piece of land. So they had to cross water at some point. He's still mouthy and punky and whatnot. And the people who meet them, and or this is while they're still traveling, the people, and we find out about the Asian kingdom, uh, we see this ball here. That's important later. He arrives, the person that he arrives with says, okay, you know, attack me with a sword and use your power. Now he exhausted himself the first time he used his power. So he's saying, oh wait, you know, I have limits. So he learns. That's cool. And <clears throat> basically just dodges him. It's a basic judo thing of you have momentum and I'll just step out of the way, you know, whatever. Uh, and this is again, to calm down that whole Mary Sue aspect shows that He's learning and and is adapting, but the fact that he could just turn it on like nothing, you know, like that didn't make sense to me. As far as like, could we see a little more where, you know, oh yeah, that that funny feeling I get as as a pubescent boy is probably my power. Yes, I'm I'm being funny. Anyway, so mutant animals seem to like him. Yes, they do, and they can see auras and whatnot. So they get their mission, and and they're teamed up with the rebels and the Asian city to go against it is a massive action scene i mean it is huge we're still going <laughs> so and he has to fight the king and it is gory as anything the king's blood melts metal notice the orange glowing eyes again you pick up that in ishtar which is another land magical artifact there that they pick up so that's affecting things somehow um they're headed to ishtar he hopes to find his mother and uh, let's see, more battles ensue along the way. They get raided by pirates. Uh, fun thing, he goes overboard and has to fight a pirate underwater. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and they just go on without him. They're, they're like, yeah, he's this royal bloodline magic guy. He'll, he'll be fine. And yeah, when they make it to dock, there he is climbing up the beach with the head of his, of his uh, opponent. <laughs> so... So anyway, they get to where they're going in Ishtar and we get a little bit more of the world. We finally see our villains teaming up or sorry, this is a flashback to our villains teaming up as he's telling the history. And we actually find out that Carl can't read. So he catches up to where his mother should be. Um, but, oh yeah, this is only I should read. But and it, they, she left a letter for him just in case he ever shows up. Uh, and he can't read. So interesting. Anyway, still arrogant. Um... Let's see, there is a scene where there's an artwork problem. One of these. Do, 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 do. Anyway, the, the sword he's holding keeps changing size. <laughs> and so there's a little bit of inconsistency in the art on that one. Can't find the exact page just yet. It's not this one. Uh, and, th and that's like one of the biggest art problems I found was... His, yeah, here. Look, it's this little get that closer for you it like where where the the shapeliness of the sword is you know is like three three times his hand length to the width to that and here it's like one hand length away to, to get to those little points so i don't know it's just like a, a weird angle or something so a little little tiny problem in the art i think there are probably more and i just missed them so he abjectly throws the head away that <laughs> he decapitated underwater all right he can't read and all right, so he's still arrogant. He's still not calming down. 
they figure out where they need to go and how they're going to get there. And they're going to go with the dangerous route across the desert. I was able to kill him with, uh, Carl can't read yet. You feel, felt compelled to correct Andy on the spelling of his name. <laughs> I've been waiting for you guys to say, oh, it's like Karl Marx. But anyway, <laughs> I was, do you think these people are alive on this end of the, the anyway, <laughs> I was able to kill him with, uh, with this blade. They're talking about the, the uh, Asian king or the Asian emperor. Sorry. In that land, he's an emperor um, with his blade. Uh, he was, uh, he was wielding since my last sword ended up melting. I decided to help myself to it. Fair trade. Uh, it must it must have been forged from a specific metal. I've seen other weapons like this in Ishtar, and Ishtar is the holy capital where the original gods and the original powers all came down, and you know that's where everything was good and magic entered the world and whatnot. All right, we'll need to travel right away. King Albrecht, that's the one they, that they tried to kill before and failed, intends to occupy Ishtar, and we'll move to intercept. So there are a lot of people here, but it's like they're the main the only movers in this world. I think that's a little bit of a writing error as well. It's kind of presumptuous that just wherever they go, they're going to be received very easily. Um, so they're not in Ishtar yet. They're somewhere in between. I forget where. So <clears throat> anyway, so that's a, a, an odd bit about the writing is some things are just too easy. Uh, like that when they get to Ishtar, how are they, they don't, you know, they'll move to intercept. Well, what if they get there and nobody believes them or cares about what they say? Anyway, excuse me a minute. <clears throat> yeah, I gotta, I gotta end the stream soon. All right, uh, to get there, we must cross the Grand Desert. <laughs> you know, these fancy names. Um, it's the quickest but most dangerous way. All right, here we go. So, <clears throat> ever hum humble, Carl, knowing that he has powers, of course, says the sooner the better. It can't. Uh, the sooner the better. It can't be that dangerous. Turn the page, and there is this gigantic crystal covered dragon worm thing <laughs> in the desert fighting them <laughs> and they're saying just our luck so nice page turn i like i like how that worked it can't be that dangerous oh how boring turn the page yeah they're screwed anyway carl takes a blast to the chest from this mutant animal um who knows who their guides are so again they got guides things are a little quick they're being told quickly we don't need every bleeding detail on how they hired guides but things are a little too smooth. So I don't know if I were to say how to do this better. It's, it's like it needs a little more complexity in it. Um, a little more intrigue. So, something about that. I'm not sure. You know, people changing people who are established on teams, changing teams in some way. Uh, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't really know. So, uh, and those are probably all terrible ideas for this particular story, but they do get to Ishtar. He gets the letter. Um, it gets read for him. They're going on their raid. One of his teammates, you know, who's this guy just gets killed. Am I supposed to care? And uh, the King has, you know, been tracking them down. Now earlier, they were doing something with an electric whip in, in one of the previous fights and it didn't affect Carl. So that like triggered a new power in him. And so he fights back here with his own electricity. So eh, cool. Um, it's just battle after battle. So I'm enjoying the world that's built. I'm enjoying uh, a, a bit of the, the other characters. Carl is, oh, there we go. Yeah, simple and underwhelming. And I, I think maybe that's why I'm cool with it is I don't need to be overwhelmed. In fact, it's kind of a relief. <laughs> so simple and underwhelming, but not simplistic. You know, so... Uh, I am enjoying it. It's just like, I feel like there should be something more. I just don't know what. Anyway, so we get a nice manga flashback here. <laughs> that, I, I know. I'm just poking at you. Gives the date. Oh, in the back of the other book, there were, there were dates and stuff on, on biographies for our three main characters. So we know how old they are and whatnot. But it gives the date and it shows us uh, when the man in the hat, who we've seen through this book, hired this other guy or was hired by this other guy for reasons that are explained elsewhere in the book. And this is the mission where the other guy dies. Well, this other guy hiring the man in the hat also married the, uh, his daughter and that's Carl's mother. So this royalty married his daughter, which is Carl's and they gave birth to Carl. And then this guy died. So, 
they figure that out what because of carl's looking for his mom and something else comes up and he says that necklace belonged to my daughter so yeah anyway so when there are things being referred to we later do get to see them in these little flashback things which i think is is nice you know it's cool that we don't have to hold in our head all the the background information we actually get shown the background information so it sticks better it's pretty cool and then this is a preview for number three beautiful artwork nice piece here and that's it so simple and underwhelming simple yeah underwhelming yeah but i like it um so what do i think it it's like i was expecting something um something more and I just have to tell my expectations to shut up because what is here I do like. So what more? I don't know. I can't define it. Uh, there we go. And then uh, do, 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 do. he married his daughter. I understand royalty king, but it said, yeah. Okay. Too many pronouns. <laughs> the royal guy who gets killed that I was just pointing at marries the hat guy's daughter. <laughs> and they are Carl's parents. <laughs> so Carl, Carl's a prince. And uh, the, the royal guy I was pointing at who gets killed, he gets killed by his brother, the king. So let's see. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to chill off. Just a quick flip through this. This will be a nice book to read later. So this is essentially an appendix book, and I like this because it gives me a chance to go back and sort of live in that world uh, without absorbing more story. It's an appendix. Credits, I won't read them. So there we are. De you know, it's definitely a recommend. So pick it up, catch up if you can. And I'm starting to think that quicker reads and certain amounts of simplicity are actually something I should uh, I should appreciate more, you know. I think the problem is I started to get into this world and I was expecting, for some reason it triggered like a Lord of the Rings expectation in me. And it's not, so knock it off. You know, anyway, here's the, the world map. So we finally get to this world map. And here is the what I call the Asian kingdom. So they took a train. Yeah. Okay. And then they took a boat. <laughs> so, or no, they, they took a train. They took a boat. And then boated over here too. Um, yeah, not sure what else to say. But recommended. More, more biography. So cool book. Um yeah, I think I approached this book and then started to read it because I read the first three pages and then started over at different times. And uh, I think my expectations approaching it were just wrong. You know, just be open and then decide if you like it or not. Uh, I do. Don't know what else to say about it. So there we are. Uh, he married the daughter. Okay, cool. Everybody, thank you for being here. Thanks for tolerating me for an hour and 47 minutes. <laughs> so hope you're all going to have a good night's sleep. Uh, let's see. Uh oh, which one do I add to stream? I bet it's not this one. It's probably not that one. I'll mute it. That's got to be the wrong one. But, no, that's the right one. Cool. Let's go right back to the beginning. Zip. All right, cool. Thanks for being here, everybody. Chat, hail. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and, and tweet out the stream at any part you liked about it. Please tweet out um, or put on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, but put out like, hey, check out this part. <laughs> and that's cool. Hello chat, etc. Everybody sleep tight. Take care of each other. Night.